Good morning everybody, this is Lara from Pure Elliott Wave with your daily update for Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. Again I'm recording early today because this surf, I'm going to go surf soup bowl today. I love that wave, it's so much fun, steep, fast and it should be a good size for us today. Not too big, not too small. A slight change for my analysis for the short term for Bitcoin, instead of a pennant pattern unfolding here this looks like it could be a flag. It's not perfect though, flags should have trend lines, resistance and support here, that slope against the prior trend. So this is correct in that it's sloping upward but there's a little overshoot here so to draw this line I've drawn it across these lows from the start of the flag and allowed for a little overshoot. So the overshoot I think that reduces the probability of the flag, it just doesn't look perfect and volume's still increasing rather than declining. Most flags and pennants are associated with declining volume. However, it does still look like it could be a flag pattern and this current session for the 8th of September, let's see how it closes. If it closes comfortably below and we see a push from volume, that could be a downward breakout. I've recalculated the target because the lower trend line has been redrawn. I now calculate the lower target for the flag at 22,852. In order to get there though, first there's support about 24,800 and if price breaks below 22,852 the target for the flag, look out for next support at 21,500 and if it gets down that low I would expect it to find final support and stop about 19,500. That's the 2017 high so that's a really important and strong level of support. Overall the trend for Bitcoin remains the same, there's still a series of higher highs and there's still a series of lower lows. This is now the last pivot high within this bear market so rather than this point I'm going to bring my confidence point down here. If we see a new high above 28145.56 that would break the downtrend and if that happens I would then have some confidence that Bitcoin may have found a long term sustainable low. The moving average situation is still overall bullish, the 50 day moving average is now approaching the 200 day moving average which still has a positive slope. Price is below both of them so overall bullish to rather inconclusive. Volume is still increasing as that flag pattern unfolds, not the most common situation for a flag. On balance volume remains within its range, there's no breakout but there was a test of support yesterday and on balance volume moved higher so now this lower line has one, two, three, four, five tests. It has a rather steep slope though so it doesn't have great technical significance but it is now developing some technical significance. A successful test of support gives a slight bullish signal from on balance volume. Still no clear trend. Still that double bullish divergence after RSI reached fairly deeply oversold so again still some technical evidence a low could be in and if it's not in now the look of RSI like this tells us that a low if we see one more low is likely to be the final low and also single bullish divergence from money flow. I'm going to show you how to use alternate Elliott wave counts to inform your decision making. Even if your alternate Elliott wave count looks wrong and has a very low probability it will still fulfill a function. This is my main Elliott wave count for Ethereum, I'm expecting a zigzag to complete lower for my newt wave 2 that's pink. A, B, C and C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the final fifth wave needs to move beyond the end of 3 at 1539.71 and the fourth wave may not move into first wave price territory above 1800.89. So this is how you can use Elliott wave rules and alternate wave counts to add confidence to one view or the other. If we see a new high above 1800.89 before we see a low below this point then this alternate Elliott wave count may have more confidence. This Elliott wave count expects that the low was in down here. It's all the same to this point here but now we're seeing C as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It could have been complete down here. A new high above this point invalidates the immediately bearish Elliott wave count adding confidence to this more bullish Elliott wave count. If we also see a break above this trend channel with a full daily candlestick above and not touching this trend line we can also have further confidence that a low has been found down here. For the very short term this more bullish wave count still expects a new lower below 1581.95 but not below 1539.71, it's very specific now. We need to see an expanded flat complete for micro wave 2, we've got micro 1 and 2 is A, 
B, C. C needs to complete as a five. One, two, three, four, five. We can't, I don't want to see microwave one over here because from this low to this high, you cannot see this as a completed five wave structure. So seeing micro one over here and micro two and expanded flat, the subdivisions all fit beautifully. The technical situation for Ethereum is pretty much the same. A flag pattern, as I outlined yesterday, still probably unfolding. It's in its seventh session. The best performing flags and pennants complete within 15 sessions. The target from this flag is 1470. Still waiting for a downward breakout, a solid close below support preferably with a push from volume to have confidence the flag is complete and the downward thrust out of it toward the target is then underway. Overall volume is still declining as price moves sideways but like Bitcoin for this flag for Ethereum volume is increasing whereas most commonly during flags and pennants volume declines so these are not the most typical looking flags and pennants so let's have a little bit of flexibility and patience with them. Ethereum also has a technically weak range for on balance volume, no signal, no clear trend for Ethereum, still that double bullish divergence after RSI reached fairly oversold, so again still some technical evidence it's possible the low could be in place. Still that double bullish divergence for money flow, let's use the same main and alternate Elliott Wave count with Elliott Wave rules to inform our decision making by telling us which is the most likely. This is an exercise in probability. This is the main daily wave count for XRP, a leading expanding diagonal complete here, and a double zigzag incomplete for minor two. Double zigzags are really common to, uh, corrective structures. They subdivide zigzag, X, zigzag, and they label W, X, Y. The purpose of the second zigzag in a double is to deepen the correction when the first zigzag does not move price deep enough. So Y would be expected to end substantially or reasonably beyond the end of W. It's already done that down here. So W is labelled A, B, C. The double is joined by a 3 in the opposite direction labelled X. And then Y is labelled A, B, C. C needs to complete 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A common depth for cryptocurrencies for their deep second wave corrections for the, is for them to correct 80 to 90 percent the depth of the first wave, giving us a range here 0.40954 to 0.34447. That would be a normal to be expected correction, absolutely normal for a cryptocurrency. And there's really strong support at 40 cents, so that's where I expect XRP may stop if it gets down there. Within the second zigzag of the double, minuet wave B may not move beyond the start of A above 0.665. And so if we get a new high above that point, we can have confidence in the alternate bullish Elliott wave count. The reason why the probability is lower is if 2 is over here, it's only a 74.5% correction of 1. Now that's deep for a normal market, but not in the normal depth for a cryptocurrency. So not deep enough for a common behavior for this market. If we see a new high above 0 0.6650, however, then this lower probability outcome would be indicated as more likely. Low probability doesn't mean no probability. You have to be open-minded and flexible with your analysis and when the market proves you wrong you need to have an alternate pathway to explain what's most likely to happen next. You need to switch from one to the other and be able to do so quickly with an open mind. I'm not seeing a pennant or a flag unfolding for XRP. The sideways movement's just taken too long for that. The best flags and pennants complete within 15 sessions. This one has now got 22 sessions of sideways movement so the probability that this is a flag or a pennant is really low. It's possible but I'm not going to put those trend lines in because it really wouldn't be a very good one. XRP still has a series of lower highs and lower lows, the basic definition of a downward trend. In order for that basic pattern to be broken we need to see a higher high above the previous lower high in that trend 0 0.6650. Now I'm not going to pull that down to here because this is not the last lower high within the downward trend because there hasn't been a lower low after this little swing high even though it has formed a little pivot and was followed by some downward movement. If we see a new low below this point, then this would become the previous or last lower high within the series of lower highs and lower lows. 
As price moves sideways, overall volume is declining for XRP. XRP gave us a bearish signal. There was a follow through for two days. It's now for on balance volume tracing out a new range so we can wait for a new signal. No clear trend, still that bullish divergence between both RSI and money flow. That's it from me this morning with your extra update for those cryptos. I hope everyone's looking forward to an awesome day.